So three days later, we now have nine additional coats of clear over the whole instrument. And uh, I think it went reasonably well. I used up pretty much the full quart of the can of lacquer. So uh, just as well I went and uh, got some. So tomorrow I'll start flattening it with probably 600 grit and then I'll leave it for at least a week, ideally two, uh, before I go to final polish. So here's the guitar stand that I uh, had the uh, guitar resting on, uh, which was jet black when I brought it in here. And of course now it's covered. Um, I'm not sure if this stuff will have dried off because it was directly in the line of fire from the gun. So there's an even chance some of this stuff is stuck on here for good. But no, I'd say it would be okay. Give it a good clean up. And we'll be fine. That's another benefit of the water-based uh, lacquer. It, it dries almost instantly. It's very fast for its initial dry. And so usually by the time it lands anywhere, the uh, evaporant is already gone and you're just left with the uh, particulate stuff. And so it ends up as really just dust. Um, yeah, we'll be good. We'll be good. So the top is flattened out quite nicely and I've also done the peg head front and back and so now I get started on the back and make this look nice. Right so that's the whole thing basically flattened um, to uh, 600 grit. We're going to leave that to cure up for at least a week, hopefully two. And then we'll wet sand with 1200 grit. And then we'll get into the polishing compounds. So far so good. The fact that it's flattened out without any disasters means I can uh, take down all the plastic sheeting and ground and put my workshop back together. Wouldn't that be nice? Hey guys, well here we are, I don't know, some days later, I uh, can't remember when I did the last bit. Um, this is now wet sanded to uh, 12,000, 1200 grit, sorry, wet and dry. Um, no disasters that I can see so far, I mean there's imperfections, this is not a <laughs> an exhibition guitar, that's for sure. Um, however, I think, I think we're getting there. So just for giggles, I had a go at doing this sort of uh, upper bout here um, with the uh, with the polishing compounds, and uh, 
yeah, I don't know if it comes out on the camera, but uh, this looks like it'll uh, polish up quite nicely. Mind you, it took me about 40 minutes to do this by hand, so... Because um, with the polishing compounds, it does actually generate heat, so you do have to be a little bit careful. But this looks pretty cool. I think if it all comes out like this, we'll be able to put it all back together. Okay, guys, it's the following day. Um, had a bit of a setback last night before I finished up. Um, when I, when I wet sanded this, all went well. It looked no problem at all when I went to wet sand the top surface. When I was all finished and I came and had a look on the back, I noticed two bubbles had shown up here which were not there before. For sure they were not there before. Um, and so... I uh, had my kick the cat, why does this always have to happen to me moment, and then I thought, well, uh, see if we can see what happened. So, I can't be sure, but what I'm almost certain has happened, given where these lumps, uh, little bubbles were, is when I wet sanded the top, even though I had left all the masking tape in here, it, it wasn't a seal and water, some of the water got down into the um, into the pockets here especially the deep recess um, where, the, where the pickup screws go and well those of you who are masochistic enough and had followed some of the earlier uh, clips on this little project will remember how absorbent this wood is, I mean it's almost like balsa in terms of absorbency um, and so I suspect since that's the thinnest part of the wood between the front and the back the water got in here, soaked into the wood and caused the lacquer to release from the back um, so I thought well there's nothing for it we'll just have to treat this like a repair so um, what I did last night before finishing was I used a heat gun to delicately, as delicately as I could try to dry the wood out from this side and then I thought I'll just wait till tomorrow and see do these bubbles get bigger or what and when I come back today they're gone <laughs> so um, whether they're gone for good or not I really don't know um, and so I have a feeling at some point they'll show up again and I'll have to do the old repair technique of lance the, you know, the bubble with the scalpel blade and inject super glue underneath and etc um, but we'll carry on for now so I'll carry on with the uh, polishing and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes and yes I could get the rotary polisher out for this but uh, I got started like this so I'll keep going like this for now and then we'll see how we go the problem with the rotary one is it's very hard to go you can overdo it real quick and heat the surface without really knowing um, and so rather than risk anything else I'll uh, and I'm not under any time pressure I shall do this by hand however I won't force you guys to watch it or anything so uh, We'll come back to this when we're much further along. Okay guys, lots of rubbing and polishing later. And uh, I think we're, we're at the point now where we can uh, think about putting it back together. Uh, it's all done to, uh, to the uh, fine grade polishing compound. And I'll flip it over and show you the back. So here we go, all polished up. I mean, I may roughen up the back again later. Uh, those of you guys who play instruments will know what that's all about. So, um, I think I think I'll wrap it here, and the next episode will be 
It's time to put the hardware back on it. Oh, and I think I have to make a nut. The nut, I lost it somewhere along the way. <laughs> oh well, no worries.